The Book of Enoch is forbidden from the Bible for its documentation of sensual fallen angels, violent giants, strange cosmology, and world-changing revelations. Ancient Book of Enoch is a book that was quite popular during the first 700 years of church history, but then faded from sight. Nobody republished it. It disappeared until the Book of Enoch was rediscovered in the Ethiopian region of Abyssinia. Even though its scriptures recorded events from before the birth to the ministry of Jesus, it has caused a lot of debate over the years on why it is not included in today's Bible, and some biblical scholars do not consider the book to be divinely inspired. After the disappearance of its original pages, the 2,000-year-old part of the Book of Enoch was found in Abyssinia, Ethiopia in 1773, and its terrifying knowledge about the human race, like a lot of doom, has been included in the scriptures of the Ethiopian Christian sect. How terrifying can these books be? Join us as we delve into the 2,000-year-old Bible that revealed its lost chapter with shocking knowledge about the human race. The Book of Enoch In 1946, or early 1947, some Bedouin boys were caring for their goats and sheep near the old Qumran settlement on the northwest coast of the Dead Sea in the West Bank area. One of the young shepherds threw a rock into a cliff opening and was surprised to hear a breaking sound. Later, he and his friends entered the cave and found several big clay jars, seven of which had leather and papyrus scrolls inside. An antiquities seller bought the scrolls and ended up with several scholars who figured the texts were over 2,000 years old. Bedouin treasure hunters and archaeologists got wind of the find. Tens of thousands of other scroll pieces were discovered in ten nearby caves, adding up to around 800 to 900 texts. The Book of Enoch divided into five parts. The Book of Watchers, the Book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions, and the Epistles of Enoch comprises 100 chapters. The Book of Enoch consists of several big works introducing Enoch to key themes like rewards, punishment, the end of the world, and the final judgment. The initial book covers chapters 6 to 36, mainly about angels, the Tree of Life, Jerusalem, and the universe. The Watcher's book tells the story of fallen angels from Genesis 6, 1 to 4, who lured women, created the Nephilim, and taught advanced knowledge to humans, ultimately leading to the Great Flood and their destruction. The word Nephilim means the fallen ones, described as big people, like giants. People see different connections between God's sons and the Nephilim. Some think the sons of God are angels who fell from grace, and the Nephilim are their kids with human woman. This idea comes from the first book of Anak, a Jewish book not in the official scriptures but still widely believed. The first book of Anak also talks about the Nephilim as giants, which makes sense if they were big. Some say the Nephilim's huge size comes from their supernatural origin, but others think it's not right to say angels or demons could have babies with humans. Another idea is that the Nephilim were just regular guys who went off the good path. Some theologians think the sons of God are from Seth, who was Adam's good son, and the Nephilim were his family members who turned away from God. St. Augustine and other church leaders and many Jewish scholars supported a belief known as the Scythian view. According to this view, the daughters of mankind were considered to be the ungodly women descended from Cain who was Adam's son with a bad reputation. In this perspective, the Nephilim were regular people, and their huge size might be taken literally or as a symbol. But one thing was sure, they were strong fighters. The second part of Enoch's book, The Parables of Similitude, is an apocalyptic story about the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days. These old predictions about Jesus align well with the Bible and are remarkably similar to the book of Revelation. The astronomical book describes the stars and their roles, while the dream visions tell a prophecy covering all of human history, from the start to the end times and final judgment. The prophecy covers everything, past, present, and future, making detailed predictions. It's a bit like the structure of the book of Daniel. In the last part, we're reminded of how we should live, 
Enoch shares the lessons he learned and the wisdom he gained, emphasizing that we're all under God's rule. Lastly, there's a part about Noah telling an unknown story from the Bible. We learn more about why Noah was chosen to save all of humanity and the hardships his father Lamech and grandfather Methuselah faced. Each part is different, but they all share a common theme, bad people getting punished and good people being blessed. Some parts of the Book of Enoch seem to go against what the Bible says. In the Bible, it's taught that Enoch went up to heaven many years before Noah was even born. However, Noah is mentioned in Enoch chapter 10 verses 1 through 3. The text says that the Most Holy and Great One talked to Lamech's son in front of Uriel. Lamech urged him to go to Noah in his name and tell him about the flood and when the whole earth would collapse. The flood was supposed to hit the entire earth and wipe out everything. The Bible doesn't mention Enoch coming back to earth after going to heaven, so it's puzzling how he could have known about Noah and the flood if he wrote the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, in chapter 10, verses 8 through 9, God says all the corruption on earth is because of a demon named Azazel. It's claimed that Azazel taught people to do all kinds of evil, polluting the earth. In the Bible, besides Lucifer, who is also known as Satan or the devil, no other demon is specifically named. That doesn't mean there aren't other demons, they're just not mentioned. Satan is generally blamed for the problems in our world because he's seen as the one behind all sin. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, Jesus said, He that sins is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was revealed to destroy the devil's works. Additionally, in lines 5-6 of the book of Anuk, chapter 13, it seems to suggest that the fallen angels felt sorry for their wrongdoings and repented. The Bible says the opposite, mentioning that Satan and his angels will be destroyed in hell fear, Matthew 25, 41 mentions. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This suggests that the devil and his angels are condemned to hellfire, indicating they are unwilling to repent, as repentance promises escape from hellfire. The Lord sticks to his promises and is patient, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to feel remorse. The book not only claims that demons repented, but it also states that after their initial rebellion, demons couldn't communicate with God anymore. They said they couldn't talk to God or even look into heaven. But in Job chapter 1, Satan could talk directly to God in heaven about Job and his loyalty. The idea of heaven is shown differently in Enoch's book, where God in heaven is portrayed in a way that's not in the Bible. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 21, the ground of the heavenly city is said to be made of gold. The city's street is described as pure gold, like see-through glass. According to the book of Enoch, the structure is made of crystal in chapter 14 verse 10. This is just one of many differences between how the Book of Enoch shows heaven and what the Bible says. You can find more in the Book of Enoch, chapters 14, verses 9 through 25. The Book of Enoch has a lot of differences about astronomy and weather that don't match the Bible or what we know from science today. For instance, in chapter 33, verses 1 through 4, the Book of Enoch says, Enoch counted and named all the stars in the sky. But Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 22, says counting the stars is impossible because there are too many. Scientists think the Milky Way alone has about 100 million stars and millions of other galaxies. But in the book of Enoch, chapter 41, says the wind, snow, hail, and moon all come from a wooden box in heaven. This doesn't make sense and doesn't match what's in the Bible. This might help you see why the Book of Enoch wasn't put in the Bible. Some people say the Book of Enoch is moving and inspiring. It covers everything from the beginning to Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, and the hidden day of judgment. It's like a summary of the whole Bible in one book, but there's a big question about why it's not part of the Bible. It's interesting to read, but it's important to remember that the first Book of Enoch is not considered Scripture. God didn't inspire it. In some old church writings, the book is mentioned in the apocryphal book of Baruch. Who is Enoch?
According to the Bible, Enoch was Adam's great-great-great-great-grandson and Noah's great-grandfather who led a holy and faithful life to the Lord. He also becomes the father of Methuselah, who lived the longest. He has had several offspring during his three-plus centuries on earth. Only two people in the Bible, Enoch and Elijah, appear to be carried directly to heaven without experiencing death. God takes him away after 365 years on earth, as seen in Genesis 5:24. Take appears to indicate snatched up or carried away, perhaps in the same way that God took away Elijah, the prophet. He walked in faith throughout his life, making all the difference. Whatever happened, he trusted and obeyed God. God was so fond of Enoch that he spared him the agony of death. Many Jewish and Christian traditions revolve around Enoch. He was thought to be the author of the Book of Enoch and was also known as the Scribe of Judgment. Enoch is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, the Epistle to the Hebrews, and the Epistle of Jude, the latter of which quotes from it. In the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Oriental Orthodoxy, he is regarded as a saint. Enoch was a well-known preacher and his sermon was one of God's judgments on humanity. His ministry was a forerunner to Noah's mission as a preacher of righteousness and builder of the ark. Given the world's level of immorality and ungodliness, it was amazing for a man to stand up and pronounce judgment on his neighbors. Why is the Book of Enoch banned from the Bible? The Book of Enoch belongs to a group of literature known as pseudepigrapha. This implies that the author is not who he claims to be, which makes sense given that the book of Enoch mentions Noah, and the Bible says that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah. As a result, it's much more plausible that the book of Enoch was written afterwards by someone who fraudulently claimed to be Enoch's original author. As a result, the book of Enoch is of little use to Christians seeking to acquire the gospel teachings. But Jude may have cited it since it was well known then, and the part he quoted included some inspiring truth that helped strengthen his case for the gospel. The genuine book of Enoch is called the Ethiopic Book of Enoch's Pseudepigraphical Work. Since the book of Enoch was written after Christ, who sought to gather what Enoch stated about his philosophy and teaching, which omits Methuselah based on oral history because the source is unreliable, it is believed that the Book of Enoch did not survive among the books of the Bible. The book contains unique content about the origins of demons and Nephilim, the reasons behind some angels falling from heaven, why the Genesis flood was considered morally necessary, and a prophetic explanation of the thousand-year rule of the Messiah. Enoch is traditionally linked to three books, which include separate works known as Two Enoch and three Enoch. Most Jewish or Christian church bodies don't consider these three books part of their official scripture. Contemporary scholars think Enoch was initially written in Aramaic or Hebrew, the languages used for early Jewish texts. Ephraim Isaac suggests that, like the book of Daniel, the book of Enoch might have been composed partially in Aramaic and partially in Hebrew. No known Hebrew version has survived. Aramaic fragments discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls and Koine Greek and Latin fragments provide evidence that Jews and early Near Eastern Christians were familiar with the Book of Enoch. Some 1st and 2nd century authors quoted from this book, like those in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs. The New Testament authors were also acquainted with certain parts of the story. In the New Testament Epistle of Jude, Jude 1, 14, 15, a brief section of 1 Enoch 1 9 is cited, attributed to Enoch the seventh from Adam, as written in 1 Enoch 68. However, this section of 1 Enoch is a midrash on Deuteronomy 33.2. Several copies of the earlier sections of 1 Enoch were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Today, the complete book of Enoch exists only in its Ge'ez Ethiopic translation. It is part of the biblical canon used by the Ethiopian Jewish community, Beta Israel, and the Christian Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. Other Jewish and Christian groups generally regard it as non-canonical or non-inspired, but may accept it as having some historical or theological interest.
The primary reason for the Jewish dismissal of the book is its inconsistency with Torah teachings. In the ease of Rabbinic Judaism, the book is demed heretical. An example is 1 Enoch 41.10, where the Angel Fanuel, who was not mentioned elsewhere in the scriptures, oversees those who repent of sin and receive eternal life. Some argue that this may refer to Jesus Christ, as Fanuel translates to the face of God. Another reason for excluding the texts in Jewish tradition could be the textual nature of certain early sections that use material from the Torah. For instance, 1 Enoch 1 is a midrash of Deuteronomy 33. The content, especially detailed descriptions of fallen angels, would also contribute to its rejection from the Hebrew canon during that period. This is reflected in the comments of Trypho the Jew during a debate with Justin Martyr. The utterances of God are holy, but your expositions are mere contrivances, as is plain from what has been explained by you. Nay, even blasphemies, for you assert that angels sinned and revolted from God. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments about this venture. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. See you soon.